If you are curious about how the Silva method works, then this video is for you. This video is one of several videos in a series of videos on this topic. So for more videos about the Silva method, abundance and law of attraction, then make sure to like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon below to ensure you get notified of future videos that will benefit you. Hello, my name is Stephen Dobos. I am an abundance and scientist coach, as well as a Silva method instructor. To get a taste for how the Silva method works, you can download a free centering exercise. The link is also in the description box below this video. The intention today is to give you more insight into how the Silva method works so that you can decide if this is something for you. Not only does your brain emit different wavelengths at different levels of brain activity, which can be measured, and each state of mind has very specific functions when it was developing, knowing how, to, how these work will help you to better use your mind. Another aspect of our brains is the mind. Yes, the mind. But what is the mind? Can you point to it? Is it here, 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 here? Our brains and our minds are con sometimes considered to be the same, when in fact, the mind and the brain are two quite distinct uh, anomalies. Our brains have two hemispheres. We have a left and a right hemisphere, whereas our mind is what is typically referred to as consciousness. So in order to give you an understanding of how the Silva method works and how our brains and our minds and our bodies interact, I want to use an analogy of a limousine. You all know what a limousine looks like and just look up on the monitor and you should see a picture of it right there. Let's break it down into three distinct parts. The first part, which is the engine. The engine is the one that runs, that turns the motor, the motor which turns the wheels, which is actually which puts the limousine into motion. The second part is the part behind the engine where the driver sits in that area. There's the driver or the chauffeur who's in charge of the steering wheel, controls the wheel and controls the pedals to give it gas and the brake. The driver is able to start the engine and get the engine moving and also to direct the engine into different and direct the body or the limousine into different directions. It can go up the street, down the street, it can start and it can stop. But the biggest part of the limousine is the one at the back. That's where the passenger sits. The passenger sits in great comfort with lots of space, maybe a telephone and drinks in the bar. The passenger is the one who either owns the limousine or is renting the limousine. The passenger is in the back. So let me ask you, who controls this limousine? Is it the engine? Is it the driver? Or is it the passenger? Yes, you're right. It's the passenger. The passenger is the one that controls the limousine. How? Well, the passenger will shout out to the front, to the driver and say, Hey, Charles, take me to the golf course. And what will the driver do? Charles will grab the steering wheel, put the car into drive, press the gas or the brake and start to direct the limousine in the proper direction. But what happens if the limousine is directed by the driver to somewhere else than where the passenger wants to go? What will the passenger do? Well, the passenger will make a correction and tell the driver, wait a minute, Charles, that's not where I told you to go. I don't want to go to the shopping mall. I want to go to the golf course. Take me to the golf course. And if the driver still doesn't do it, then what's the passenger going to do? Well, the passenger is going to find another driver. So the back where the passenger sits is where the directions are coming from. The driver is in charge of taking those directions and redirecting them to use the limousine, to use the motor, the steering wheel, and the gas and the brake pedals, to direct the limousine to the proper place, the place where the passenger would like to go. So the real power behind the limousine is in the hands of the passenger. So let us compare this to our body, brains, and mind. So as we said, that the mind is in this unknown magical place that nobody can point to. Neuroscientists continue to search for and are examining this. Lots of research is being written on this, but nobody yet can really say for certain where the mind is. But how do we know 
what the mind is. Well, our thoughts come from our mind. The mind is the one that is in con contact with a much greater awareness than the rest of our bodies. So our mind is actually like the person that's sitting in the back of the limousine. Our mind is like the passenger who is giving the orders. Our mind is constantly giving orders. Something like 60,000 orders a day. Those 60,000 orders or thoughts are constantly going through and popping into our mind. There's a thought and there's another and another. About one and a half seconds, we get a new thought coming to our minds. Now, in order for this, these thoughts to get processed so that these, this physical body can actually move, it must go through the control mechanism or the chauffeur, which in our case is the brain. The brain sits here inside our skull. So the thoughts that we have are processed by the brain and then the brain transmits all that information through our nervous system and then it makes the proper movement. So for instance, if I want to lift up my left arm, then I have to make that thought so that my brain will understand what my arm needs to do. Now our brain is working 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It never goes to sleep. It's always active. Our brain is constantly controlling our biological systems, our nervous system, our endocrinic system. It is controlling our blood system, the veins, our heart, our lungs, keeping us alive moment to moment, 24 hours a day. Our brains are like the ultra supercomputer that's hidden behind or the ultra super chip that's hidden inside of every computer, constantly processing the information that comes through. And it's transmitting that information in the proper format to the rest of the body. So I can lift my arms, lift my legs, I can go left, I can go right. I can also use my brain and my hands and my physical body to take any task that I want to take on. Whether I want to learn, memorize, or use my critical thinking. My thoughts are always in, are always in control, directing communication, communicating with my brain constantly. And my brain is taking those messages, those computer programs as they were, and converting them into understandable electrical signals, which are passed through my nervous system into the rest of my body. So you are controlled through your thoughts. Every single thing that takes place in your life is controlled through the thoughts. Now, in the Silva method, so the things that you want to accomplish, you can accomplish more easily, with less effort, with less work, and more quickly. Whatever those things are that you desire, if you follow a certain structure. A certain structure is the system that Jose Silva set up over his 40 years of research, and we now teach it through the Silva method. So, if you want to get a taste for how the Silva method works, and what you can do with the power of the Silva method, then download the centering exercise here under the description or in the description box below. In the meantime, if you've liked this video and find it valuable, then please like, subscribe, and share this content with others. Remember the subscribe button is below. Again, my name is Steven Dobos, and if you want to subscribe or register for the next Silva course, then click on the link in the description box below. See you in the next video.